and talk about changing the beta of a portfolio. Clearly, if we can use hedging to change the beta of a portfolio from 1.5, this was the example that we had earlier, to 0, we should be able to change the, portfolio, the beta of a portfolio from 1.5 to anything we want. So, let's recall the um, problem that we did in the previous video. Uh, the optimal number of contracts we entered into was 30, given that we had a beta of 1.5. The index at t equals 0 was at 1,000, while SPX, a four-month futures contract, was currently priced at 1010. The value of our portfolio was 5,050,000. Again, 30 contracts. So that would, that would change the beta from 1.5 to a beta star equal to 0. So we can change beta to any beta star we want. Let's say that beta is 1.5. We want to change it to 0.75. That's a condition where the original beta of our portfolio is greater than the beta, the target beta we want. So we are trying to lower exposure, not eliminate, just lower exposure. So we're going to be short how many contracts? N star equals beta minus beta star. So again, if beta star is 0.75, we would go from 0.1, 1.5 minus 0.75 uh, times the value of our portfolio divided by the value of one contract. If originally at a beta of 1.5, getting to zero required shorting 30, getting halfway there would require shorting 15. We can set the beta to 0 0.6, 0 0.93. You can set it to anything you want. If you want to increase beta, on the other hand, if the markets had a, a, a pullback, you pulled off your hedge, all the signs indicate that for the next couple of weeks there's going to be a rebound, there's going to be a surge, and you want to increase your exposure without increasing the size of your portfolio, then your current beta will be lower than your target beta. So if we're at 1.5, which we are, and we want to get to a beta of 2, let's say, we want to raise our exposure, that means we want to be long a certain number of contracts, and it would be, instead of beta minus beta star, beta star minus beta uh, times the uh, original uh, value of our portfolio divided by the value of one contract. And this will give us the long exposure that we need. One other thing I should mention as well, if we're going to go into a long exposure on top of our portfolio, it's going to require margin it's going to require that we post margin. However, if we go into a short position on our portfolio, you will find that your margin requirement will be set as zero because the stocks in your portfolio will act as the margin requirement because you're decreasing your beta, you're decreasing your, your exposure with portfolio margining. Now, we're not talking about position margining anymore. We're talking about portfolio margining you'll actually lower. You won't need to post margin, but when going from 1.5 to 2, you're going long. Portfolio margining would say that you're increasing your exposure to the market. You would need to post some margin on that. So if we can change our beta to zero, we can change it to anything. That's, that's an important point to keep in mind. Now, going back to the other hedges that we did where there was a physical asset underlying uh, the delivery. Could we do that? Sure you could. You could do that as well. Remember now, you don't have to have a 100% hedge. You could have a policy of hedging out only 50% of your risk so that maybe you're 100% long oil, but you only want a 50% exposure to that. You could use futures to hedge out some of that. Let's look at an index pairs trade. Now a pairs trade uh, means that you've selected two assets. One that you feel is very strong, one that you feel is very weak. And rather than making a directional bet on either one of them, you're going to make a bet on the spread between them that they will spread out. So you'll long the strong asset and you will short the weak asset. So let's say that you've selected a portfolio that you think is superior to the market. You think, I've got a portfolio that's going to outperform the market. And let's say that the market goes up. We have an up market. So our portfolio is expected to increase in price. But we're going to short the index. The index will also increase in price, but we expect the index to do this. 
we expect our portfolio to outperform the index if the market is going up and here's our profit it is the spread between the two we have a pairs trade we're betting on the excess return of our portfolio over the market if the market goes down on the other hand we would expect our portfolio to drop but since it's stronger than the market we would expect that the index would drop by more than our portfolio thereby giving us the excess return of the portfolio over the index this is called pairs trading and pairs trading removes the market risk altogether it removes it and what you're doing is you're making a bet on a strong asset versus a weak asset and at this point you don't care if you have an up market or a down market you simply just expect that your choices will outperform your strong choices will outperform whatever you said is your weak choice in both markets so you can use the futures to initiate an index pairs trade so the last concept in this chapter is the idea of a stack and a roll and let me set that up for you let's say and I'm going to extend the example in the book the example in the book has a, a, a one unit delivery with a, a one uh, or maybe a two or three month period of time I'm gonna say that we're going to deliver one million units per quarter for the next year and we're just going to call them units we're going to deliver units I'm not going to decide that it's oil or cotton or whatever the case let's just call it units we're going to deliver one million units at the end of quarter one at the end of quarter two the end of quarter three the end of quarter four so there is a futures contract on units and each futures contract is for 10,000 of these units so if we are going to deliver 1 million units this is a number sign actually 1 million units and each contract is for 10,000 units we need 100 contracts per quarter so if we could we would hedge the first million with 100 contracts that expire Q1 100 that expire Q2 for to match quarter 2 to quarter 3 and quarter 4 and so on but let's assume that there are only three month futures available so all we can do is hedge out three months so we can hedge out the first three months rather easily but what about the six month the nine month and the 12 month delivery date there is nothing further that we can use so we can wait until quarter one is done hedge out quarter one enter into new uh, three month contracts for here enter into new ones for the third quarter and so on or we could stack and roll them and here's how that works on day one since we're delivering one two three four million units and every million unit requires 100 contracts we will short 400 contracts on day one we will short 400 knowing that they'll all expire here here's where they expire but we want to hedge out all the way down here so if we short 400 contracts and they expire here we will then roll forward 300 contracts and they will expire here and once we get here we will roll forward can you see where this is going roll forward 200 contracts which will expire in quarter three and once we get here we will then roll forward 100 contracts so that we are always hedged and they'll expire here in quarter four so we have exposure to four uh, to four million units over the course of the year we short 400 contracts and so now we're short four million units in the contract after they expire we roll forward only what we're still exposed to which is three million units that will require 300 contracts etc etc so to follow the logic through here's our stack and we roll create a new stack and we roll create a new stack and we roll and then finally they expire so Q1 We'll look at the end of q1 it will look like this we have 300 short at the end of q2 when those expire will be 200 short at the end of q3 when these expire will be 100 short and the end of q4 when they expire we will be flat so that's how you hedge out for a period longer 
then a futures contract is available. You simply buy enough that you need to cover everything over that period of time, and then you roll them forward. Now, let's say that we didn't have the one million in each of the quarters. We just had a one million a year from now. We would simply short 100 contracts that expire here. We'd roll them over into another 100 contracts that would expire here. We'd roll them over into another 100 that would expire here. Then we'd roll them forward into another 100 that would then expire here. So it's just a matter of rolling them over until we get to that point. That's stack and roll.